Moving to another topic, a few weeks ago, popular Nigerian pastor, Prophet T.B. Joshua, passed away suddenly one week before his 58th birthday. In 2019, we were given exclusive access to his historic visit to Israel in which thousands of people traveled from abroad to be healed by T.B. Joshua in Mount Precipice outside of Nazareth. Let's see the scene from my piece. Something told me, stand still, stand still, don't move. Like something was resisting. And when he put his eyes on me and he pointed to me to go down, I couldn't resist. I, I just felt that something heavy came out of me and uh, now I feel free. It was really such a powerful moment to be to be part of this in 2019 and now we're very uh, very happy to be joined live from Lagos, Nigeria, one of TB Joshua's biggest champions and supporters, Dr. Gary Tong, a friend of Scone, the synagogue church of all nations founded by the prophet uh, many, many decades ago. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, thank you. It's really a pleasure to have you. And again, on my condolences to you know all of the people that were part of the prophet's inner circle. I know it's a huge loss, but I, let's start by honoring his memory. I mean, you and your family connected to him, and you know you're from the UK. Your background is in math and engineering. How did you find yourself? you know, connecting it to, to the pro, former prophet, or still a prophet, but Prophet TV Joshua, uh, enough to really spend so much of your life in Nigeria, going back and forth? Yeah, that's, that, that's a good question. I mean, it was back in 2001 um, that we were in a church in the UK. Um, we were praying for revival, the revival of uh, Christianity in our country. And as part of that passion, a number of us visited different places where we'd heard that God was at work in a special way. One of those was Nigeria, um, Prophet C.B. Joshua. We'd seen the videos, we'd seen healings like the one that you just showed a moment ago, and we wanted to go and see. So we went there, a visit in 2001. Um, but I have to say there was a great impact in that visit. You know, the, everything, uh, you know, that is said about him is that he really, he was such a humble man. He came from humble beginnings. I know his mother was like a cleaner of the local church. He started the ministry yeah. with eight people, but that even as a child, you know, he, he knew he was on that path. Is that something, um, you know, that is very notable to you and why, you know, that people really picked up on the fact that he doesn't, he never forgot where he came from? Yes. Yes, absolutely. You know, one of the things he said which really struck me in those early days was don't let your blessings dictate your direction. Mm. Um, he showed that in so many ways. He wasn't steered by money. He wasn't steered by reputation. He chose to put aside what people thought and just live to obey his conviction about what God was saying to him. Mm. Wow. So those humble beginnings wow. were, were very, very important. Talk he never moved away from that. Right, in his right, heart. right. And listen, hence, you know, you see he had millions of followers from all over the world on all platforms. People, I know half of the, the tourists that went to Nigeria made a point to go see him and, and, you know, try to take part in the miracles, you know, that were done. Have you yourself seen miracles like this happen? But, you know, the amazing thing is, I would have thought from my previous experience, that that would be kind of, wow, this is what it's all about. But it absolutely isn't. In one sense, the miracles became just something which was, which was normal, an expectation that God would do it. If we fulfill our part of being obedient and humble, then God, who is the healer, you know, TV Joshua said many, many times, I'm not the healer, I'm just a man, I'm a simple man. I know the healer, his name is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And the miracles were, became commonplace, not, not that we didn't value them, but that it was, it was just natural, it was going to happen. The core thing was to remain faithful to the message and not to be deflected by the interest, the praise, not to start because of that, starting to focus on different things, become more presentation oriented. And we, I just thank God for TV Joshua, who took us mm -hmm. back to the beginning, to mm -hmm. the basics of course. all the time. We were tempted 
carried away by all this uh, interest. Right. Well, listen, I mean, it, it's very hard to not, you know, notice when you're seeing, you know, on camera, even in my personal experience, being at Mount Precipice in Nazareth two years ago, which and I also know that he he actually invested money to redo the amphitheater and put in the steps. Yeah. So he he gave a lot of charity also also here in Israel. But, you know, you can't help but wonder and you look at this and you're like, is this real? But it's seemingly it really you know, you you just see people falling down, but it really is, there's something to it. Explain what that is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that, that's right. You know, it's, it's an issue, it's an issue of faith, really. Uh, one of the things that TV Joshua frequently emphasized, and it's, it's there in the Bible, all Christians would believe this, but he really lived it, is faith comes first before sight. So there's a certainty, an absolute certainty, that this has happened in heaven. And what Jesus said is true when it says in the Bible, and by his wounds we are healed. All this is true, and we don't actually need the evidence, the, 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 the visible evidence. And I've found in my experience in, in seeing this happen um, that a, we simply don't need that evidence. It may be a blessing to other people, but the certainty is there without it. And that seems to release you mm. to see it actually happen when you don't need to see it happen. Right, right. That release you to actually do it. Right. Because you're not trying to prove God anymore. You know, there's one thing so clear about this. There was no way he would ever, he, he wasn't trying to prove anything. He believed absolutely firmly in the word of God, in Jesus Christ, and there was no need to prove it. So he would never be pressurized to pray for somebody. Right. Even if somebody, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we presidents have visited Lagos. And it, it, yes, they've been given due protocols. But in terms of things of the Holy Spirit, they've been treated the same as any person from the street. Also, you know, the exactly. name of the church is, you know, Skoll, the Synagogue Church of All Nations, which, you know, Yes. The word synagogue is used. I know when he came to Israel, he met with all kinds of Jewish leaders. You know, he really seemed like such a conciliatory, conciliatory yes. you know, voice in what he represented. I mean, was it important to him to really have this understanding and to, to celebrate the, you know, you know, the shared ancestry that Jews and Christians have and, and the connection, you know, to the Holy Land itself? Yes, it was important. It was, it's not something that he preached about very often. Um, but as in things that in, within his life, it was evident by the respect that he paid to the Holy Land, the number of times he visited. I'm actually not aware of the details, but I know he'd been there um, before we ever went in 2001. There were pictures around the dining room of his standing at the beautiful gate. Mm. It was very important to him to walk in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. And also, he respected those who were devout, whatever their background. Right. Such a unifying uh, force and, and a great man. And I know he gave millions to, you know, disaster relief. I know you mentioned, uh, we're out of time, but I know you went to Ecuador, two-hour canoe ride to build yeah. a school. Like, he really put yes. his money into furthering no, healing and, you know, love to, to all, from all regions. I know exactly. Afghanistan, Pakistan, Ecuador, everywhere. Exactly, exactly. That's the other side of the coin. One side of the coin is the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ in healing, deliverance, miracles. The other side of the coin is love for humanity. And again, this was something he didn't do as a project. This is something he lived. We saw so many examples and we saw the fruit of it in these big projects like the wonderful thing in Ecuador, which would be another documentary. Yeah, exactly. Actually. Gary, thank you so much for your, your candid interview and, and really all the best. All the best and blessings to you and everybody from your inner circle in uh, you know, carrying his ministry forward in his honor. Thank, thank you so much. And our blessings also to yourself and to all the viewers. God be with you in Jesus' name.